Well, I think I'm gonna be all right, I'm gonna be all right If I can hold on halfway through this night There's times I'm lost to feel so low I wanna see the afterglow I think I'm gonna be all right, I'm gonna be all right well, the night bird sings a sad, lonely song Just whistling a tune on a wire hanging over her lawn Can pierce my soul down to the core Till the sadness seeps from my pores Night bird sings a sad, lonely song Train and I'll ride somewhere tonight I don't care where I go I just want to get out of sight Watch the scenery and the cars go by Let the tears wash my cloudy eyes I'm on a happy train and I'll ride somewhere tonight With this bad weather deep inside my head the ocean's rough and the waves are full of dread It's gonna pass if I just hang tight I believe everything is gonna be alright There's bad weather deep inside my head Hoping that it's the end Maybe standing up high With my feet on a ledge And my life barely hanging on to the edge I pray that it never comes to this My friend I love this place. Man, they feed you such good dinner. That's what I look forward to as a musician, you know? Being fed and it was free. You gotta understand, in 1988, I went over to Europe and was playing on the streets for a long time. And if somebody gave me a little bit of food, it was cool. And now here it is, 2014, and I finally got a free meal. I was thinking those thoughts today. I made up this song this morning when I woke up. But I don't, I, I will screw this up, but these are the thoughts of kind of what I have been through a little bit. And uh, I think I might be able to do it if somebody over there that's brave would come up and hold the words. I just need one brave soul. Okay, here she comes. You look brave. Thank you, darling. So what you'll do is you'll just follow the words and then you'll know when to turn the paper over. You know what I mean? Can I wear your glasses? We'll all need them. <laughs> this is like an ARP convention. <laughs> this is 
is the greatest show I've played already. <laughs> okay, so let's okay, see. All right. You stand, okay, stand close to me like okay. this and then hold it up here like that. Oh my God. If we pull this off, this will be amazing. I need this towel behind it because the words yeah, come through. That's why I requested a towel on my rider. Cool. This is either going to be the dumbest idea I've had or the best. You got to understand, I picked up my guitar this morning and made this up in bed. And then I drove up here from San Diego. Tomorrow I'm catching a flight out of LAX at 9 a.m. to Houston. So here goes. You be rolling down the window cause you can't see through the fog You know a truck jackknifed in the snow up ahead for show The radar got you clocked at 87 and a 55 Gotta make the gig and somehow stay alive Finally reached the club but they got no posters up You play to 12 people half a puking in a cup Sell 12 CDs, give another three away You're hoping that somebody has a house that you can stay Ten hour drive in the morning, don't sweat it Keep thinking about the gig last night, you wish you could forget it Listen to a podcast of Radio Lab. Try to call your mom but end up yelling at your dad Need more gas so you pull into the come and go The weather channel says that you're about to hit some snow Sell one CD, give another four to play Hope for way, dad, insult to injury you had to pay to play You're a folk singer, folk folk singer You're a washed up punk Still a dead ring of old folk singer, folk folk singing today. The club owner says you should have played here last week Cause right now it's finals and no one makes a peep He wishes that the money would have been a lot more But the deal was only for a small percentage of the door $27 and a couple foreign bills They tried to pass a hat but everyone was high on pills Sell no CDs, give another six away You're almost at the top, tomorrow's gonna be a day Finally get a break and get to do some radio But the DJ says it's tape for next week's show Does you know good cause tonight you got the gig but you Keep on smiling and dance a little jig. Car starts whining and the engine's running hot. Gas stations, dude, says your radiator shot. Sell 12 CDs, gave none away, but the radiator took it all. It's Groundhog Day. Go, folk singer, folk, folk singer, you're a washed up punk. Stay the dead ring of folk, folk singer, folk, folk singer today. Get a good offer from a club in Atlanta But the gear talk but the airline Set your guitar all the way to Montana Finally get a real person on the phone from United But you lose your cool and tell the dude to go bite it Goro book, borrow a guitar and try to cool your rage When you walk into the club, someone else is on stage Sell no CDs cause the club was double booked You never even got to play your feel your life is overlooked Finally get some sleep and there's a nice blue sky They found your guitar in the baggage claim out in Dubai They say that it'll be there for your gig in Tallahassee You ate bad bean soup and you're feeling kinda gassy Motel 6 and you wish it was the Ritz At least you got a private place because you got the shits Sell 5 hats and 10 CDs Yes sir, no sir, no please, please Folk singer, folk, folk singer You're a washed up punk but you're still a dead ring of folk Folk singer, folk, folk singer today Your manager grabs you right before you play the show and says you need to dye your hair because it's getting white as snow. Your girlfriend calls you right before you leave the stage. She saw your picture up you with some chicken. Now she's in a rage. Break up, break down, break it all to hell. They charge the damage to your motel bell. Sell five stickers for 50 cents. You're a folk singer. Now you're about to make a dent. Finally get some good news from the booking agent dude The show tonight they'll give you half off on your food The place is packed and you're gonna make your fee But they wouldn't even turn off the sports TV You feel like you climbed another rung on the ladder You're another day older, another day fatter I'm a folk singer now in the pale moon right And that's how I'm standing on stage for you tonight I'm a folk singer, folk, folk singer I'm a washed up punk, still a dead ringer I'm a folk singer, folk, folk singer today I'm a folk singer, folk, folk singer, I'm a washed up punk, still a dead ring, I'm a folk singer, folk, folk singer today. I'm a folkity folk, folker, I'm a Bram Stoker joker, I'm a jokity joke joker, I'm a motherfucking folker today. Uh, 
let's start with the song you wrote this morning. <laughs> I've experienced that so many times. I'm just now getting at the level where it's not that bad anymore, but uh -huh. I have had that so many times. Oh, so when did you know you were gonna do that song today? I mean, did you know this morning? I wasn't gonna do it, and then I was backstage, and I looked at it, and I go, ah, I can't do this, I'm gonna save it. I gotta do it when it's ready. But then I know how I am, I'm like a kid and it's Christmas, and I wanna show everybody my new present, because songs are presents to me, they're yeah. just gifts from wherever. I don't know where they come from, but they're divine inspiration for me when they happen. I'm just like, I feverishly write them down, and I'm just going, Oh my God, I've got to do this tonight. I can't, I want to show everybody my new puppy. Yeah. And so I had that girl hold the words. Yeah. And I screwed up a couple lines, but that's fun because it's got the new car smell on it. And by, after I play it each night this week, it'll be so polished in a month. It'll take about a month to get the, all the lines, the delivery down. And that's why we're so happy to have it pre-polish. Yeah. Also, you know. Thank you, everybody. It's all true. <laughs> Everything in that song has happened to me. Seriously. I didn't even put in the part about punching a guy. <laughs> I lost. Here's one I made up on the airplane a while back, a few, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And I was on the plane and I thought, I'm gonna write a song and then when I get off, I'm not going to have a melody to it, but I'm going to play a show that night and just put this song to the first melody that comes to my head. I sort of wanted to put the first melody that would come to this, these words that I wrote. Here it is. It goes like this. I want all my friends to be happy. I want all my friends to find love I want all my friends to share good things Be blessed by the light from above I want all my friends to be hopeful Not to be slaves to a bank Hope that my friends never have to Roll through the streets in a tank I want all my friends to have kitchens Stocked up with bountiful food I hope they wake with a smile Say words like totes, us, and do. I want all my friends to know laughter, uncontrollable from deep in the gut. I want all my friends to have fine shoes and to pat someone cute on the butt. I want all my friends to go travel And to see the world for just what it is A beautiful place to inhabit A big melting pot made of jizz My mom wants me to change that line Steven, I really like that new song, but I think you should change that one line to this. A big melting pot made of bliss. I was like, damn, Mom, that's a good line. I want all my friends to dance naked. But then my mom said, you know there is a difference between naked and naked. Naked is when you're naked, and naked is when you're naked and up to no good. I want all my friends to dance naked So all of their neighbors can see I want them all to be colorblind 
And to keep those skinhead racists far away from me I want all my street friends to love All of the gay friends I have I'd love it if we all went to dinner Cause my gay friends always pick up the tab Want all my friends to be healthy And when they see kale and greens not just to scoff I want them to live long and prosper And to tell cancer just go fuck off oh yeah that's your part and to tell cancer to just go I think we do it a little better because if we do it really good we might scare it away for anybody who might know somebody with cancer or somebody who could be in the street let's try it again and to tell cancer to just go yes I want all my friends to know one thing The one day when I'm long dead and gone I want them to know that I love them That that's why I wrote them this song Because I want all my friends to be happy I want all my friends to find love I want all my friends to share good things And be blessed by the light from above ba da 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 ba ba da 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 ba 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 da 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 ba ba da ba ba You guys really sang that great. <laughs> so good. It was fun doing I Want All My Friends to Be Happy. And yes. just, uh, it was just a good time. 
tonight. I, I like the vibe of the room. I mean, how so how does that feel? And do you think about that beforehand that you're going to get a whole room of people shouting, you know, fuck off or... Well, my friend had just passed away from cancer. And that was why I wrote that. Yeah. And I like saying that because it's got this line in it that talks about one day when I'm all long dead and gone. It's fun to make people laugh and then give them an uppercut of yeah. like something that's Serious. ow. Right. Well, because if you're already laughing, if you have somebody laughing, the human emotion releases chemicals in the body where you're laughing and it's really good to laugh. And then while they're like that, they're lubed up, you can hit them with something so hard that makes them go, ah. And you can go from laughter to tears like that. It's kind of fun. I can't believe I'm playing Houston tomorrow. <laughs> I gotta drive, I, gotta, I fly out of LAX at 9 a.m. And I left all my merch at home. It's like I'm a clothing distributor tonight. I left all my CDs at home. What an idiot I am. But I did bring my hats and my shirts. <laughs> the hats have a mule on it and it says El Pulso. These are cool. And then I got these shirts because the weight class I wrestled at was 98 pounds, and they say, El Pulso, 98 pounds. So I do have these. <laughs> that was my weight class, up until my senior year of high school. I know, I shot up to 106. <laughs> it was crazy, because we would have to weigh in to make weight. You know, my junior year, it was kind of hard to make weight, and so you would chew sour gum and spit into a towel. And that was intense, and then you'd, you'd weigh in. And uh, I hadn't gone through puberty until my senior year of high school, so I was hairless. And I would wrestle these guys that had like full mustaches and shit. I'd be scared, and I would go, I would weigh in like that. But I was a really good wrestler. But <laughs> by my senior year, I was 106, and I started to grow a little bit and it felt good. Now I'm six foot one. I can't believe it. I'm 142. <laughs> I shot up to 142. <laughs> I'm a 54 year old man and I'm 142. <laughs> Here's a song I wrote after a girl I was going out with broke up with me. It's a makeup song. Here it goes. This is called Ten Chances. I only had one minute left on my calling card. I was halfway around the world and it was raining really hard. And I only had a couple of aspirin half a can of beer so I swallowed it down for courage it was still pretty hard to hear I only had three words that I wanted to tell you but it would be easier if you were here and I could smell it Words are falling out of know They drift, they pass, they melt like snow I know I may be a flake I scrape my knees and make mistakes I may lose but mostly win Sometimes I get soaked in sin But I fall right back into your arms again So I ordered four cans of Tuies and I set them on a trunk. Had a long conversation with a hopeless drunk. And I only had five tickets with six new friends. One of them had a hissy fit and drove off in her Mercedes Benz. Words are falling out of know They drift, they pass, they melt like snow I know I may be a flake 
I scrape my knees and make mistakes I may lose but mostly win Sometimes I get drenched in sin But I fall right back into your arms again We played seven card stud And I had a royal flush And I took out your picture And I started to blush Cause I only had eight lives Most cats got nine So I skipped out on bungee jumping Just this time I only had ten chances to say I love you. Our words are falling out of know. They drift, they pass, they melt like snow. I know I may be a flake. I scrape my knees and make mistakes. I may lose, but mostly win. Sometimes I'll get soaked in sin. But I'll fall right back into your arms again I collapse into your loving arms again Hey, I'll fall right back into your arms again Pasadena My sister and me and my mom and dad from the cold to the sunny south There were palm trees growing and it was not snowing and I never did shut my mouth Now we drove on over to the courthouse in downtown Los Angeles Put our hands on the Bible and we swore as a family we were not communists When we drove away I started to cry They said, what's wrong son, are you sick? I said, I don't want to be an American I want to be a Catholic we talked Hollywood and baseball in the car. The voice of Vin Scully, oh man, it would travel really far. And there's an eerie spider web shadow crawling in Shabbos Ravine in the bottom of the ninth inning. Sandy Koufax comes out to the mound and he's up to his hips and alligators. I believe he's still calling games, man. What a voice. What a voice for baseball. Vince Scully, what a legend, man. When I hear his voice, I become sort of just like it's a Pavlovian response. I feel safe, like a little kitten being carried by the mom cat. I feel so good. Well, I made my first communion in St. Rita's Catholic Church in Pasadena. There was incense choking and a priest was smoking. There was a choir up in the purge. My face got red and my stomach felt bad. They said, if you're gonna get sick, use a cup. 
Well, I thought by the time it was my turn for communion, Jesus would be all eaten up. Hollywood, the baseball in the car, the voice of Ernie Harwell. Oh man, it would travel really far. Detroit Tigers, Ernie Harwell, passed away a couple years ago. Another great announcer. Now my allergies were bad, so we moved to the desert to a city called Palm Springs. We trick-or-treated at Liberace's house. Each finger had a diamond ring. We met Elvis Presley in the middle of the summer and he hugged my sister for far too long. Well, I felt kind of weird, but I would have pimped her out just to hear him sing a song. We talked Hollywood, baseball in the car. The voice of Jack Buck, it would travel really far. Jack Buck also is deceased. Man, what a voice he was. St. Louis Cardinals. From the bottom of the ninth inning coming up. Ozzy, the Wizard of Oz. Ozzy Smith. I don't believe what I just saw. It's true about Elvis Presley, man. Oh, man. Well, one day we got a call from our neighbor across the street. It was Mr. Rice. He was the manager of the Palm Springs Airport. Hi, Steve. Hi, Kathy. Grab your bikes. Elvis Presley will be landing in a private plane today in Palm Springs. You guys can meet him if you'd like. Holy jeepers, Mr. Rice. Are you fucking kidding me? Yes. We rode our bikes down to meet him after my mom washed my mouth out with soap. Laid our bikes down on the tarmac. Out in the distance was a plane. We heard the engines of the plane buzzing towards us. We heard the squeak of the tires as the plane landed. The steps came down. It was 115 degrees and out stepped Elvis Presley, larger than life. It was comeback special Elvis and he was in great shape. He was the Richard Nixon drug advisor. He had a pompadour, pork chop sideburns. He waited for us to come to him. Rockstar cool handbook rule number one. Wait for fans to come to you and act like it's business as usual. He had it down pat. He smiled the most charismatic smile I'd ever seen. Even in that bright desert sunshine, his grin shined a thousand watts. Sounds like your kid's been a running. You gotta catch you, Elvis. He picked me, Steve Poltz. He picked me up in the air, swung me round and round, tossed my hair, shook my hand. He gave me his autograph on a piece of paper he casually ripped out of a notebook he was holding. It was 1969 and he was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Next, he hugged my sister Kathy for what seemed like a really long time to me. She was older than me, like really long. I didn't know whether I should protect her or offer her up. It's okay, Elvis, you can have her. I said in my high-pitched voice over the sound of the whirring propellers. Your sister sure is pretty, he said. He seemed like he would have talked to us for hours and hours. He never seemed to be in a hurry until finally one of his assistants came up and said, come on, boss, we gotta go. Well, we waved goodbye to the king and rode our bikes home high on the trail of success. Nothing could ruin our happy moods. Sure, the Vietnam War was looming over us and assassinations and drug overdoses were all over the papers. But all we knew was Elvis Presley was our best friend and we were fans for life. When I got home that night, I pulled my guitar out of the trusty case and I practiced for hours and hours. And that was the night I learned how to play I Can't Help Falling in Love with You in Blue Suede Shoes. Life. Life is full of memory markers. Some are brighter than others. And this is one memory I'll, I'll remember my whole life. The day I met peaceful Zen Elvis and offered him my sister. Now here I am a growing up boy at home on the 4th of July. Staring out at the ocean and the fireworks in the sky. I miss my friends who aren't around 
The ones who passed away Oh, well, I'm feeling kind of grateful here On Independence Day We talk Hollywood And baseball in the car The voice of Tom Cheek Tom Cheek? Are you kidding me? Tom Cheek was the voice of the Toronto Blue Jays They'd never won a World Series until the year 1992 they tried to repeat it in 1993, but they were playing the Philadelphia Phillies. And guess what happened, ladies and gentlemen? Joe Carter hits a walk-off home run. The Blue Jays win. Being from Canada, my dad went nuts. Ran into the front yard naked. The cops showed up. It was the first time I ever saw my dad get arrested. But as Joe Carter's foot touched second base, Tom Cheek says what you could never make up. He just said it out of the blue. He goes, touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. I started crying, and I had goosebumps, one of the most amazing moments I'd ever seen. I think it sounded kind of Joe like has had his moments, trying to lay off that ball, go to the outside part of the plate, and he just went after one. Two balls and two strikes on him. Here's the pitch on the way, a swing and a foul, left field, way back, Blue Jays win it! The Blue Jays are World Series champions, as Joe Carter hits a three-run home Series champions. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. We talk Hollywood and baseball in the car. The voice of Jerry Coleman and Tom Cheek. They travel really far. I get allergies and asthma in the yard. And no one ever told me growing up would be so hard. I love baseball. Yeah. Ever since I was a little kid. I just, it's my game. Yeah. And, uh, so Tim Flannery became a fan of my music in San Diego. We played a show together. He was a second baseman for the Padres and then he was a third base coach. And somehow he heard my music and we played a show together. I don't know whether he was a huge fan, but he liked it. At least he tells me he did. And then um, I followed him like the... Um, the Padres were playing, and Bruce Bochy was managing them, they were playing in Florida. So I happened to be in Georgia on tour, and I go, hey, uh, and I got his phone number and everything, and I go, can I, uh, my name's Steve Poltz. He goes, I know who you are. And I said, I'm gonna come to the game tomorrow. I'll leave you tickets. So afterwards, we hung out, and we smoked cigars on his deck, and just hung out and drank, back when I used to drink. And this is years ago, and we got hammered. And then he goes, uh, great to see you. And then they were playing Milwaukee the next day. He flew to Milwaukee, and I had like a week off, so I go, I'm buying a ticket to Milwaukee. <laughs> and the way Flannery tells it, he's got to his room back when, before we all had cell phones, and the light was blinking, the red light. He's like, who would know I'm here? And he goes, it's me, leaving a message. He was like, stalker. <laughs> stalker alert. And I, yeah, I had so much fun, I decided to come up to Milwaukee. <laughs> And he was like, a uh, little weird, dude. So then he let me go out and shag fly balls in the outfield. I got to hang out with Tony Gwynn and meet all these ball players. And then he realized I was pretty much harmless. But then I destroyed Bruce Bochy's mini bar in his room. He's the manager of the club. And I broke it open because I ran out of alcohol. And he passed out or something. And his mini bar was locked. And I pried it open and like threw bottles all around the room. This is why I don't drink. Like I was out of his mind and he got $867 of damage and his mini bar and everything. And so then the Padres general traveling secretary laid down an edict, a rule that said, Steve Pultz is not allowed to stay in the same hotels as the Padres. Like seriously, they had a meeting and then players like, stay away from that dude. He's not allowed to come in the same hotels. And players like, what the hell's wrong with you? And then. Yeah.
with the tales from the tavern on the mean streets of San Andes. Hell yeah! Kicking it old school with the tales from the tavern on the mean streets of San Andes. Hell yeah! Kicking it old school with the tales from the tavern on the mean streets of San Andes. The tavern on the mean streets of San Andreas. Hell yeah! I'm hanging out with my homie Ron Cologne. Yeah. I'm eating some meatballs, eating some pasta. They got oranges in the room next door and almonds too. Kicking it on school at the tales from the tavern on the mean streets of San Andreas. Such a good time playing for you guys tonight. Thank you so much. You guys are the best audience ever in the world. You're better than the audience tomorrow night in Houston. You just are. Already I can tell, I can see the future. And I'm gonna tell them I said that. That's not a good thing to do. But I just have a feeling that show's gonna suck after this one, because this is the greatest show I've ever played. How can I top tonight when tomorrow is gonna be awful? I'm, I wouldn't go to it. If any of you are planning on going to Houston tomorrow or you have friends there, keep them away from the mucky duck, because I'm gonna stink up the stage. give you a good rider here. When you're a, a rock singer like I am, sometimes they give you your rider and your rider is what you request, like almonds, and Greek yogurt, avocados sliced up, nine volt batteries, <laughs> whatever you want, man. Ron Cologne, Tales from the Tavern, and he and his lovely sister, they do this right. And I love it here. And I'm honored that I got to play it. I often wondered what's on the Dalai Lama's rider when he goes and speaks at places. Because my friend said, you know, she said, I gotta take a call from the Dalai Lama's agent. And I was like, what, the Dalai Lama has an agent? She was bringing him to speak at this theater. I never got to see the Dalai Lama speak yet, but that'd be neato. Neato? Not a good word to describe the Dalai Lama speaking. Reminds me of the time I met Neil Young after we recorded Jules' record there. And came back to meet him and uh, we were standing by a Mexican food buffet and I could have said like, I like the work you've done for United Cerebral Palsy or I know you're really into Lionel Trains. Was that a Martin D28 you played on Harvest? And instead I just go, wow, these quesadillas taste great. <laughs> and he looked at me like only Neil Young can. I go, the tortillas taste real homemade-y. 
And I've never used the word homemade until that night. I feel like there's a love vibe in here. We're all gonna get laid tonight. It's happening, man. When you go home tonight with the one you love, pretend I'm in bed with you too. He's like, no. Come on, spice it up a little. Try something new, dude. Dude with the Clint Eastwood beard. <laughs> you won't be able to get it out of your head. <laughs> Am I sleeping with my wife or is this Steve Pulse? <laughs> the Dalai Lama's agent emailed me again with a handful of requests I was on the I-10. to a rest stop and put my paper to the pen. They said the llama likes his whiskey and small bills and fives and tens. I'd seen a lot of riders from England to Nepal. Ringo, George, and John, the Dalai Lama, and Sir Paul. I said I must be dreaming, the skies are black above, there's a beating in my heart, and there's a reason why I love. There are monks in flowing robes, and the opium is free. There's a bed there in the corner, and a telescope to see. There's a seashell on the table, if you hold it to your ear, and you listen really close, you'll hear laughter from a pier. The children are all singing, their voices blend as one. It's happiness they're bringing, they're dancing in the sun, and everything is perfect, and we're all spinning free. The telescope is waiting, take a look and you will see all the world below you in eternity above. Your spirit is forever, and this is why I love. This is why I love. <laughs> This is why I love. This is why I love. This is why I love. Tell us about that little uh, instrument you were playing tonight. Oh yeah, that's a four-string tenor guitar. My friend. Uh, won it in a poker game and then it was hanging on the wall of his room, bedroom and I came in it was covered in dust and I started playing it and then I borrowed it from him four years ago. Is it still his? I bought it finally. He oh, okay. said, uh, there should be a term on borrowing. So I bought it. And I love it. It's a great guitar. Uh -huh. Sometimes I do a lot of songs with it. It just depends on my mood. Uh -huh. Tonight I did a couple. I did the Dalai Lama's agent and yeah. I did I Pray It Never Comes to This. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our sound man was was doing the sound, and, and he leaned over to me and he said, "So far, except for one, they're all new. We've never heard these before." You know? That's good to know. And I thought I could do all new, but I there's certain songs like I really wanted to do Sewing Machine because yeah, people like to hear that song, and it's and it adds a different energy well, to you know it. What? There's a certain amount of um, people feeling again like that's ours. Yeah. You know, we have a special relationship with that. Even though you might do it every night, these people feel like, we, you know, that's ours. I don't and, do it every night, but you know? 
if I don't do it, people get mad. They, they always go, you didn't do Sewing Machine. But I'm like, but I did a bunch of other songs. Sometimes they get mad at you. I have to do this song tonight because somebody requested it and it'll feel good to do it as well. Um, the piano you hear on this is AJ Croce. I love AJ. And uh, he said to say hi to you guys tonight as well. So AJ says hi, which is really good. We love him. Um, okay, so this came about because my friend told me to write a song and say sewing machine in it. And uh, uh, here goes. And the piano, that was the only rule. You had to say sewing machine. You had 24 hours to do it. I think Jason Mraz's sewing machine is real slow. Bob Schneider's sewing machine came out mid-tempo. Billy Harvey's was a little faster. Tristan Prettyman's was kind of medium range. And mine was kind of psycho. <laughs> much smaller than me he lures the children up for spider tea he's buzzy as a bumblebee well his fingernails have all turned black his nose is like an old smokestack steam leaves his ears and when the smoke clears You'll see that you can't go back. Well, he says his name is Jack Beevil. His voice is as screechy as a weasel. He'll sew you up to the wall. In a long, dark hall, he's got a bunch of kids sewn to an easel. At least a hundred kids sewn to an easel. He sews the kids together, and his teeth are great. You can't scratch an itch. Your eye can barely twitch. He's a mean old man with a sewing machine. Well, the parents tell the kids, Don't go in the woods. There's a scary, scary man who isn't good. Little Mary didn't listen as hard as she could. Now she's sewn to the wall in a hood. She's got a brother with a hook for an arm from an accident that happened on the farm. His name is Ben. He doesn't have any friends. All the children made fun of his mom. Little Ben scratched his itch with his book. Got an idea while reading a book. He welded scissors to his hook where his hand used to be. And he said, I'll search for my sister down by the brook. Ben climbed deep into the ba -ba -ba forest. All the owls started singing in a chorus. Be careful, little boy. When you go around the pass, there's a gargoyle and a hood named Boris. Sa 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 Sewing machine. He sews the kids together, and his teeth are green. You can't scratch a niche. Your eye can barely twitch. He's a mean old man with his sewing machine. into a hole in the ground. ground. It was cold and so far down, down, down. It was dark and hard to see. But he screamed for Mary and kept going down, down, down. When he got to the bottom of the cave, felt like he was in a big there were kids sewn to the walls, down all the halls, that he knew he had to say. He cut the children down just like he was a crook, using the scissors and 
the end of this hook. And as the kids broke free, they were screaming with glee, saying, Ben, you are the man. <laughs> Jack Beevil was as angry as a snake. And he jumped out of a big black cake. He grabbed Ben by his coat, with his hands around his throat. His evil body started to shake. Jack Beevil fell to the ground. And his tears fell all around. He said, I'm sorry I kept you here. I was lonely and without cheer. But no one talks to me in this town. Jack Beevil sits alone in his cell. When they ring the jail house bell, little Ben will come to see him, even though they'll never free him. He's making friends, mending clothes from his cell. He makes some men mending clothes from his cell. Everybody sing along, please. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> he sews clothes for the kids. His teeth are green. You can't scratch an inch. Your eye can barely twitch. He's a lonely old man with a sewing machine. He's making new friends with a sewing machine. I love this life that I get to have. Like, I really love being able to play music. I still really look forward to it, it's weird. It's the best life in the world. I ran away and joined the circus 25 years ago, and I'm still not sick of the circus. Yeah, right on. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> I'd like to thank my dear friend, who I love so much, Ron Colon, for putting on this show. I would like to thank the fantastic, wonderful Steve Forbert for being such a cool guy and for hanging out all night and swapping stories. If Steve Souls is still here, I'd like to thank him just for being here. Because you know, when I was a little kid and I was crossing the street to go to school, to Catholic school, one day a, a wasp landed on my head, but I thought it was a fly. So I slapped my hand down on it and it stung me. And I pulled the stinger out of my head and all the nuns took me into the convent and I had an allergic reaction. They gave me some Benadryl and I fell asleep on a cot. And when I woke up, my mom was a teacher at the school and she leaned down and kissed me on the forehead and gave me an orange flavored sherbet push up. And she looked me right in the eyes and she said, Stephen, I just want you to know one thing. She said, I love you. And then she said, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm with you till the end. I'm in it for the long haul. You'll always be my friend. So years and years and years later, I went away to college to the University of San Diego, California. I studied political science and Spanish. So I knew I wouldn't have a job, but at least I fucking know why. I had this roommate named Todd. Todd overused the word dude. He was a surfer from Southern California, so. He had a lot of different ways to say dude. Like if he saw you at the airport and he hadn't seen you in a long time, he'd go, dude. But if you were in Tijuana and he blew off his finger, which he did with an M80 in Mexico, he'd go, dude. <laughs> if you walked in on him in the bathroom and he was having a wank, he'd go, dude. If he walked in on you in bed with his mom, he'd go, dude. Well, that didn't happen, but that's what he would have done. Anyways, he had this red bag, and in the red bag, he kept two dirty magazines. He called it the bag of porn. 
He used it by its acronym though, BOP. And one night he met a girl out with you, he was searching and he said, hey dude, I met this girl, she's so hot. I'm gonna bring her home tonight. I don't want her to reach under the bed and see the BOP, the bag of porn, so I'm gonna put it under your bed. And I said, please don't put the BOP under my bed. My parents are very Catholic. If my lungs collapse and I'm rushed to the hospital, they will think the BOP is mine, let alone the name of the two magazines you have in there, of which I cannot say the titles in this room. Slick Slots and Prison Pussy. And I said, I don't want my parents to think I was reading Slick Slots and Prison Pussy. And he said, dude, this girl's hot. I'm taking her home tonight. So he put the BOP underneath my bed, and that night I went out and my lungs collapsed. I was rushed to the hospital. It was the 12th collapsed lung I'd have. It's called the spontaneous pneumothorax. It happens to guys that are tall, young, and thin. And the doctor said to me, dude, this is like your 12th collapsed lung. And I said, please don't call me, dude. It just makes you seem nice, like you're not a doctor. And he goes, dude, this is really serious. You gotta get what's called a thoracotomy where they scrape up the inside of your rib cage so it never collapses again and it sticks to the back of your ribs. And I said, dude, I do not wanna get that surgery. He said, you have to, you could die. So he said, we're gonna have to call your parents to come down. My parents drove all the way down from Palm Springs, California to San Diego. They brought the priest with them. That was our local priest of the Catholic Church, Father Michael Murphy. And the priest was there, my mom and dad were there, and my roommate Todd was there. And my mom said, Stephen, you're gonna be in the hospital for at least two weeks. So we're gonna stay in your room so we don't have to get a hotel. <laughs> Holy shit, by then the Michael Jackson drugs had kicked into my veins. And I was feeling really high, and my mom's head took on Todd's head, and I was hallucinating. I felt like Hunter S. Thompson in Vegas. There were bats flying around the room. And as they wheeled me off to go into surgery, I thought my mom was taught, and my last words were, B.O.P. Mama. And I remember my mom looked at me like a dog does when you say something that doesn't understand. She cocked her head and she said, B.O.P. Mama. I went into surgery, and when I woke up, I was in intensive care. Tubes coming out of every orifice in my body. The nurses were there. They very, very, very much would not give me any water. They dabbed my tongue with a cotton swab. And the priest was there, my mom and dad, and my roommate Todd. And I looked at the priest and I said, B.O.P. And Father Murphy said, do you have to pee, Stephen? Do you have to pee? Do you have to pee? And I said to my mom, bag of porn. Just like that. She said, you can't have any corn. No solid foods. Finally, it was like I was the exorcist. I looked right at the priest and my mom and dad. I was so pissed off. Get the fucking bag of porn out from under my goddamn bed. Slick slots, prison pussy. Priest covered up my dad's ears. I don't know why everybody covered up my dad's ears. Nobody covered up my mom's ears. Todd ran out of the room. And then my dad leaned down, he said, it's cool, we still love you, Steve. Besides, that Slick Slots was a pretty good magazine. And your mom really liked Prison Pussy. And I said, no! And then he kissed me on the forehead and he said, Stevie boy. He said, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm with you till the end. I'm in it for the long haul. Always be my friend. Now, as I stand here on the tails of the tavern in the Maverick Saloon in San Inez, California, I can only think about one thing. I think about love, love, love. I look at some of the people that used to play my records on K Otter. I think about when I was in the Rugburns and I would play Dick's Automotive and I would travel up and down the coast singing songs like Hitchhiker Joe and Sky fucking line of Toronto. I think about my friends that are not living anymore and I think about what if I love the most. And you know what? It was my dog. God, I love that dog. I was allergic to him and he gave me asthma attacks and my mom wanted to get rid of him, but I loved him. He'd always sleep in my room and I'd have an asthma inhaler right by my bed. His name was Bojo. One day I was pretending I was on the Los Angeles Dodgers and I was playing catch with my dog. He was in the 60s. And I threw the ball and it went over Bojo's head and he ran out in the middle of the road to try to get it and there was a Cadillac coming down the road. People of the Mad Brick Saloon, it was going 50 miles an hour. I'll never forget the sound of the tires skidding. The 
sound of that car hitting the dog I love. I cried so hard I picked him up, his blood was all over me. He snapped at me like he didn't even know me. That dog was my best friend. I ran him inside the house. My mom drove as fast as she could to the veterinarian. He went in for surgery. I said to the veterinarian, please, please let Bojo live. If you let Bojo live, I swear to God, I'll come back and play a show at the Maverick Saloon with Steve Forward. My friend Ron, come on, we'll put it on. But I was only eight years old at the time saying this. It was 1968. And my mom looked at me and she said, what are you talking about, Steve Forward? Who's that? I said, he's fucking awesome, Mom. You love him. Who's Ron Cologne? One of the coolest guys you'll ever meet. He's gonna put on shows. He'll sell out a whole season. It's gonna be good for my career, man. She said, how do you know this? And I said, because I'm time traveling. You've got to get back to the island, Jack. I said to my mom, I'd become unstuck in time like Billy Pilgrim in the book Slaughterhouse Five. The veterinarian looked at me and he said, your kid is special. And I said to the veterinarian, this is good weed, man. Finally, Bojo goes into surgery for five hours, six hours. The veterinarian finally came out and he goes, Steve Pultz, your dog Bojo, <laughs> he's gonna live. Oh my God. I've never been so happy in my life. I cried tears of joy. We brought my dog home that night. He slept at the foot of my bed. I had an asthma attack. I kissed the little stitches on his legs. I kissed his neck and I said, Bojo, I love you so much, I'm so glad you're alive. And my dog looked at me and he said, I rub room too. <laughs> and I said, you can talk? <laughs> and he said, this is good weed, man. <laughs> Don't forget to play the Maverick Saloon. <laughs> Steve Barber's gonna be there. It's gonna be the greatest night of our lives. He looked at me and he started humping my leg. He said, everybody's gonna get laid, even me. This is good weed, man, cause I'm in it for the long. I'm with you too. I'm in it for the long. You'll always be my Let me hear you sing it. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm in it for the long haul. With you till the end. I'm with you till the end. I'm in it for the long haul. You'll always be my friend. Something's wrong. We need the room connected in love. Oh my God. We've got to rescue little Timmy from the well. The only way we can do that is if you raise your right arm up in the air like this, really high up. Raise your arms up. Now put it around the person next to you. I need this room connected in love. Don't be afraid to put your arm around a stranger. We've got to make this happen, people. Are you with me? Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get a hallelujah? All right, let's do this shit. I'm in it for the long haul. I'm with you till the end. Thank you so much.